Hi, and good day. My name's uh, Pete Will, and I am an account manager on Esri's Natural Resources team. And my primary focus is business development within the mineral extraction industry. And I'm pleased to welcome you today to this webinar entitled Geospatial Strategies for Tailing Storage Facility Management, or TSF. I will be your MC for today's webinar. This webinar was organized in collaboration with the Esri Mining Users Group, and a recording of this webinar will be posted on YouTube and shared with all registrants. Throughout the webinar, we encourage you to ask questions through the GoToWebinar question dialog box. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible and at the end of the webinar, uh, but any questions we don't get to um, will be answered in a follow-up email and sent to all registrants. So in addition to myself, I'm joined today by Matt Ballard and Michael Wallace. Matt's a solution engineer and my teammate on the natural resources team. While Michael is a GIS programmer and developer with Freeport McMoran, and he is a member of the tailings and water group. Michael is also a professional geophysicist. Before beginning, I'd like to say a quick uh, words, quick few words about the Esri Mining User Group or MUG. The MUG serves several purposes. First, it acts as a professional networking organization focused on geospatial professionals in the mining industry. Esri is very committed to understanding what's important to our mining customers, and the MUG acts as our com community outreach site. It's how Esri gains feedback from our users. The MUG also works to coordinate seminars and networking events at mining conferences and facilitates webinars like the one you are watching today. These webinars are designed to document and demonstrate mining workflows which leverage geospatial technology. The MUG has been in existence for well, 11 years now and is made up of well over 2,000 members. The membership is managed on LinkedIn, and I strongly encourage you to join the community. With that, let's take a look at today's agenda. The goal of today's webinar is to discuss Esri's approach for bringing together data from mobile apps, IoT devices, and remote sensing all in order to help improve operational efficiency and decision making in TSF management. First, we'll provide some context for TSF management and how ArcGIS provides useful tools, followed by Mike Wallace, who will uh, present several real world use cases using mobile GIS. And then Matt Ballard will take us through some of the Esri technology. Finally, we'll wrap up with a question and answer session. Okay, so let's get going. When it comes to tailings, uh, the risks and consequences are very clear, given some of the disasters of late. Being some of the largest engineered structures in the world, holding trillions of tons of historic and new tailings, the potential environmental risk and liability on mining companies is all too obvious. Going forward, the reality of lower grade deposits being mined inherently produces larger volumes of tailings, which in turn compounds the problem facing mining companies and the communities in which they operate. In working with my clients, I have found that a successful TSF management plan requires the involvement of several disciplines, approaches, and data sources in order to adequately and safely be implemented. And ArcGIS's ability to integrate all types of data can significantly aid in such projects. Of course, ArcGIS integrates geospatial data through maps, but it also integrates layers from imagery, from various sources like drones, photographs, LIDAR, uh, tabular data, unstructured data like documents and reports, as, re as well as real-time data from sensors. Through bringing together operational layers, you can create a common language of maps, dashboards, and 3D scenes. 
These operational layers can be mashed up and integrated dynamically to provide a common system of record for the enterprise. The system of record is important because effective TSF management includes discipline and, fun and functions from across the enterprise. What you learn from exploration and feasibility activities are applied to operations, which in turn is important to HSE and compliance. And then of course, to community outreach and reclamation as well. What we typically see from our more mature customers taking this approach once, we, once they've become familiar with the ESRI platform. TSF management hits the heart, hits at the heart of the enterprise culture and how we envision your organization interacting with the communities you serve and the environment in which you operate. Many of you um, may have attended Esri's virtual UC and heard Jack Dangerman, Esri's president, talk at length about sustainable prosperity. He defined sustainable prosperity as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the future. Today, successful organizations are realizing there, there are three critical elements needed to create sustainable prosperity, economic, social, and environmental. Economic prosperity meaning creating positive financial results. Social prosperity meaning doing good for the people and environmental prosperity is considering the responsible impact on the planet. GIS technology can help organizations achieve their goals with regard to these tenants, but it requires more than just technology. It requires intelligent action, good value, ethics, and pure hard work. Essentially, it requires you to understand and apply the technology in a balanced way. So if we think of sustainable prosperity and TSF management, we can look at it this way. The probability of risk may be small, but the potential impacts are enormous for environmental, social, and economic reasons. Therefore, an enterprise approach that includes geospatial considerations can help ensure compliance, confirm stability of structures, and assist in emergency planning, thus positioning your organization to proactively respond to issues and communicate with stakeholders. So now let's, let's show you how the ArcGIS platform can help. These five capabilities on the screen are not exhaustive, but represent the keys to Esri's approach. And in a moment, I'll ask Matt and Mike to provide some details um, and expand on these. The first three, field mobility, remote sensing, and real-time data, are important to measuring and visualizing information on the ground. Equally important is providing easy access through a system of engagement to both internal and external stakeholders. So let's use field mobility as a good starting point for our discussion. Historically, maps have been static, either printed or as a PDF, but mining operations are dynamic. Today, field surveys can be conducted efficiently using modern handheld devices and simple applications. These applications are flexible and configurable and address specific data collection needs and can also work offline when needed. So now let's introduce Michael from Freeport, who can help explain and show us some of these requirements in more detail. Thank you, Pete, for the introduction. Everyone, welcome to the MUG webinar. Let's dive into how Freeport McMoran applies mobile GIS to tailings management. I'm interested in showing some specific examples of how mobile forms have improved our documentation and action item tracking on tailing storage facilities. To do this, I briefly want to go over 
Freeport McLaurin's tailings management strategy and relate this strategy to GIS applications. Next, we will dive into two mobile forms. First, the dam construction form. Secondly, the engineer inspection form. Our vision at Freeport is zero catastrophic failures or unplanned discharges from tailing storage facilities. To carry out this mission, we focus on four categories, engineering design, monitoring and technology, multi-tiered oversight, and learning from past experiences. I will expand on the first three categories. Let's talk about multi-tiered oversight and how as a geospatial analyst, I fit into tailings management. I'm a member of the corporate tailings crush leach and water team. We are a team of professional engineers and scientists that guide and support the site tailings team. We also develop tools and review program initiatives. My three colleagues and I leverage geospatial technologies to provide solutions for tailings management to both site engineers, third-party engineers, and senior management. The governance diagram on this slide outlines the roles and responsibilities and reporting structure from, for our tailings facilities. There are three groups, those with operational responsibility, such as site engineers and management, technical responsibility, such as corporate tailings and water, and external resources, such as our tailing stewardship team, our tailings review board, and our engineers of record. There are three relevant phases of tailings management where GIS plays a role. The first is engineering and design. We need to perform risk assessments, design and construct the facility by following a rigorous process based on data and sound engineering principles. The data that is used as inputs and outputs is inherently geospatial. It needs to be organized, named correctly, and versions managed so that it is useful for engineers to incorporate and utilize in their designs. Subsequently, the designs need to be managed and organized. The data is also utilized periodically for site visits, inspections, and during operations for analysis. Moving on to operations and maintenance phase, or the dam construction phase, we have KPIs to assess operations and facility health. This is the area where form-based mobile inspections is most relevant. There are also use cases for imagery, topography, and monitoring data temporally as well as spatially. Lastly, we have our third-party review and stewardship initiatives. These programs review operations and all other data to provide recommendations for good practice. The TST team is a group consisting of engineers from corporate, third-party consultants, the engineer of record, and the sites. The team inspects the active facilities every year. A tailings review board reviews designs and operations periodically to make sure that best practices are adhered to. For the last slide, I want to highlight mobile mapping and data collection applied to tailings. We use mobile maps in several different ways within the tailings group. The first figure on the left shows a map created for a site visit to an area being evaluated as a possible location for a tailings facility. It was very useful to add the footprints of the facilities, geotechnical investigations, and other info, geology, archaeology, etc. For engineers to understand where they were in relation to facilities that only exist on paper. This area is empty with no real markers or landmarks. The map helps with navigation. Engineers also have the ability to record pictures and video and notes to make to take back and refine the designs. The second screenshot shows an active tailings facility as built information is overlaying on top of high res satellite imagery to allow site engineers and the stewardship team to navigate and make observations all over the site. One map has a dual purpose, depending on the user. The work behind the scenes to create the maps and keep them up to date focuses our efforts. We use the map making process to collect information, organize it, and curate it for all sites. 
We even transmitted map packages to other consulting companies or created reports from the observations collected. Now I want to dive into form-based inspections for the remainder of this presentation. Initially, when we were looking to carry out an inspection, we wanted a system that had the following requirements, record locations, photo, videos, and store them linked with contextual information. We need data acquisition to be simple and quick. The development process should be intuitive, quick and flexible. The software should support mobile platforms, multiple mobile platforms. The data should be stored as records in a database. Access to the data should be secured based on use case and role. On the back end, we need flexibility to access the data, report on it, and visualize it. Also, it'd be nice to have support for multiple languages. A form based mobile GIS application fit the requirements best. I included a diagram detailing the architecture we currently use to acquire, store, and analyze or visualize geospatial data derived from mobile forms. Notice that on the mobile side, it's simple with single pipes to the servers and database, whereas on the back end, we can connect multiple applications to the data. Users can log into a web app to visualize the data, report on it, and lastly, download the data for further analysis in CAD, GIS, or other preferred desktop software. I wanna talk about tailings storage facility construction briefly to get on the same page. Tailings is waste, sand, silt, clay from the milling process, crushing and metal extraction. Tailings is pumped as a slurry to a storage facility. Cyclone separates sand from water and finer particles. Sand is used to build the embankment that impounds the finer tailings. One way our operations constructs a tailings embankment is to use mobile cranes, mobile cyclones, and dozers. Operators monitor deposition of the tailings and report this to engineers. The picture I'm showing shows a crane mounted cyclone. The slurry flows through the pipe over the berm and into the cyclones, the eight conical shaped features pointed in different directions. Beach sand flows out of the cyclones and drops onto the tailings beach to build up the new crest. The fines and the water flow out the pipe that extends into the impoundment. The berm will reach a maximum height over time and then a new crest road and berm will build, be built on top of the previously deposited beach sand. The second picture is a mobile cyclone sled that is building up crest or a berm on the backside of the impoundment. You see the cyclones depositing fresh tailing sand on the crest while water and fine tailings flows out the end of a pipe, also known as a spigot where you see wet tailings farther into the picture. Operators monitor these deposition locations and report on conditions. In the bottom picture, you see the crane, tailings pipeline, and cyclone suspended over the berm. They will also move, operators will also move the cranes when enough sand has been deposited in one location. This slide shows the old method of data collection. Operators would inspect each deposition location on a regular frequency and make notes on a paper form. This process created a stack of forms that was large and took time to review. There must be a better way. The new inspection form records all the same information as before, but also has the ability to track location and capture a photo. The form is filled out with a ruggedized tablet that is shared amongst the operators. The operators pick up the tablet at the beginning of their shift, turn it in at the end of the day. Data is then synced via Wi-Fi to the web GIS portal for review and archival. The form uses terminology familiar to the operators. Is the dam down refers to whether tailings are being actively deposited.
The data is used to track dam construction. Engineers can now filter the data for the most recent observations and then download a spreadsheet or other file format, depending on their use case. There's also the ability to create a simple report and check usage statistics like observations made. Usage for this form is dependent on tailings deposition plans. Dams are not being deposited on as frequently now as in 2018 at this particular mine site. The previous form was a site-specific example. Let's take a look at an example of a form that applies to all facilities. TCLW Corporate, as mentioned bef before, has KPIs and a scoring system for our facilities. The facilities are scored on a number of different categories, such as the monthly inspection report and action item tracking. To help the sites provide consistent documentation of facility health throughout the month, Corporate tailings and water team develop a work instruction on performing inspections that includes a mobile form for documentation. At the corporate level, we develop the questions and answers to be comprehensive for the facility being inspected. The form has four key questions that the site engineers answer from a standard list. What facility are you inspecting? Component, what piece of the dam are you looking at? Observation, what are you observing to this related to this component? Is it normal? Is it not normal? Severity, what is the severity? What is the severity? None is the default. If the observation is not normal, do we need to monitor or maintenance the problem? The rest of the form is notes, pictures, action item tracking. There are also standard fields like location, time, date, the site are auto-populated. And I, I've included the list of the answers here in this uh, slide. Here we show the form as it stands today. Engineers at all the active sites with tailings facilities in North America use this form now. When we originally set up the form with normal and none as defaults, we actively encouraged engineers to document normal conditions. Now, after the form for at least a year, or using the form for at least a year at some sites, 80% of observations are designated normal. The other 20% of observations fall into two categories, maintenance items such as scouring from rainfall or a leak in a tailings delivery line will be repaired. Features to monitor, such as cracks, depressions, wet spots, will be monitored. We can also track statistics on what we are observing, like which component and observation are most frequently recorded. Also, I show a running log of the severity over time to track the frequency of maintenance items. Inactive tailings uses, the simil uses a similar form. Data visualization is enhanced with web apps and customizable workflows. The sites can use to symbolize, filter, and ultimately report on the data. On the right is an example of the observation report that is created including a feature map and the attached photos. It is very easy for any site engineer or a corporate engineer to locate the data they are looking for and then create an observation report. We also have an action item tracking report that details observations that are currently open or actively being monitored. The visualization on the top left shows items colored by severity. Most observations are normal, but there are some maintenance items also shown. The bottom left shows a count of observations in specific areas, allowing the engineer to the ability to track clusters. You could also display the information as a heat map. I want to speak a little bit about implementation. This has been challenging. It requires diligence, patience, and support. As the GIS analyst, I suggest visiting the sites and or working through a corporate point of contact for adoption. 
but also you need to make yourself available for troubleshooting and setup. Documentation is key too. We have a work instruction that goes over the inspections in detail, but I also send out informal emails with procedures for signing in or filtering data and creating a report. Lastly, getting on the phone or screen share usually helps the most. Another talk, topic is improvements to the system. We all have to realize that it, with a broadly scoped mobile application, there needs to be consensus and review of enhancement requests. Also, make sure to use a development environment before updating production. Two reasons for this. First, production should never go down because of an enhancement. And secondly, upgrades to third-party software need to be tested with existing workflows and reports so that complications and bugs can be worked out. This is where it pays to work closely with IT architects and analysts to systematically perform maintenance. The screenshots show one of many updates we have made to the engineer inspection reporting application. I'm showing the workflow for selecting a site and zooming to it. The old is on the left, the new is on the right. The new workflow also filters data so site engineers can't edit other observations. Conclusions. Mobile forms allow engineers and or operators to easily collect valuable information about current conditions on our TSFs. An enterprise GIS system supports a variety of workflows to visualize, report on, and analyze inspection data. Engineers and management can choose from their preferred application to digest the data. Information collected informs engineers management about facility health and broader TSF management activities, such as deposition planning, maintenance needs, and assessing facility performance. Collaboration between GIS, IT, and management is key to creating a successful mobile solution. And we have more forms planned in the future. We're going to inspect water dams. We have construction inspections, uh, seepage inspections, and tailings distribution line in inspections. Thank you. I will now turn the presentation back over to Matt Ballard. All right. Thanks, Michael. I really appreciate you running through that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the screen share and pass that over uh, to myself here. Uh, yeah, again, really appreciate you showing us, running us through how you're using forms to, to modernize your workflows and, and how they've been of benefit to you so far and what you've deployed. Um, what we'd like to do now is give a quick example, uh, you know, looking at a live demonstration of how some of our mobile apps can be configured to address a similar workflow. Um, and specifically around visually inspecting tailings facilities, just like the one that Michael showed us. Now, before we jump into the actual demonstration, looking at the mobile apps and how, how they're configured to, to support a workflow like that, I do want to talk more generally about how we're seeing geospatial data and, and methods being applied to tailings management. Uh, as Pete discussed earlier, he was talking about how different sensor um, sensors and different remote sensing methods, as well as visual surveys are all different technologies that mining companies are using to modernize how they manage tailings. Um, and we've seen how critical proper monitoring is due to the potential environmental, social, and economic impacts of failures. And, um, and so let's talk about those three techniques at a high level before we jump into to the mobile applications. So with remote sensing being the first one that we discussed, uh, remote sensing is used to uh, monitor a wide variety of different attributes, things like deformation, water content, and much more. Here on the map that we're looking at, uh, we can see a tailings impoundment, and we're able to incorporate information like INSAR, or Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar. This data and analysis was provided by 3V Geomatics, who supports mining companies and other industries by helping them to observe ground movements and changes before they become a problem using remote sensing. These analytics are just one example of remote sensing that are easily integrated into the ArcGIS platform for visualization, map creation, and sharing. At the same time, we've also brought in Sentinel-2 imagery for this base map, which Esri provides through the Living Atlas. In this case, the imagery was captured just two days ago, giving us an up-to-date picture of the facility. Sentinel-2 also provides multi-spectral data, 
that can be used to create indices to highlight water content. So as I zoom in here in blue, we can see that water was automatically detected and it, came, and it can be compared against distances from the dam's crest to understand beach length and better manage and mitigate risk associated with water management. So with remote sensing, we're also seeing drone and ground-based sources that are, are being used. And, and at its core, everything is geospatial. It's all being integrated into maps and applications like the one we're seeing here. In the ArcGIS platform with regards to remote sensing, it helps you manage, visualize, and analyze all those different types of data. Now, the second way that operators can remotely monitor their tailings facilities is through uh, sensor measures, sensor measurements captured from devices such as piezometers, uh, inclinometers, and much more. In the age of the Internet of Things and, um, and uh, all these different IoT devices that are everywhere, uh, you know, every single device is connected to a network. And being able to comprehensively see those back in, uh, you know, charting tools and in dashboards like the one we're seeing here is very important. And with ArcGIS, we can stream in those event data in real time from sensor and IoT platforms to be then visualized on this map. So here, each of these um, uh, symbols indicates a location where we have a piezometer. I'm able to interactively select um, sensors, such as these three up on the right, and it filters charts on the left, which show me the rolling 30-day average for hourly pressures coming from these sensors. So we're able to use this to then understand, again, from a water management perspective, uh, understanding water levels within the, within the dam. So between remote sensing and IoT sensors, you can create a very comprehensive dashboard for remotely monitoring any facility. And all of these data sources are inherently geospatial and quickly visualized in a dashboard such as this. Now, the third technology being used is mobile applications uh, for visual inspections. And as we saw earlier from Michael, mobile apps can streamline data collection processes and significantly provide benefits. And this is where I'd like to focus really the rest of the time is by looking at a beginning to end workflow for field surveys. Here, as I switch to another view of my dashboard, I'm able to see um, a view that's much more focused on data that's been collected in the field. Each of these dots now represented around the facility correspond to a visual survey that's been conducted using Esri's mobile applications, specifically ArcGIS Survey123. From here, I'm gonna jump over to my mobile screen and we can look at what that looks like um, in the field before we visualize it in this dashboard. So here, what we're looking at now is Survey123. This is a form-based data collection app. Oftentimes, these Survey123 forms are created from existing paper or Excel-based data collection processes that you might already have in place. So when we talk with customers, they'll show us oftentimes how they've been capturing data in the field. And those workflows can generally be replicated very quickly using something like Survey123. And we can configure these forms to look very similar to existing processes as well. So I went ahead and jumped into this inspection form that's been created for tailings facility inspections. It'll take just a second to load. The first thing that I'm gonna capture, which is at the top of my form here, is general information about this inspection. Information such as the operator's name at the top left, which I'll go ahead and put um, my name in here and the date that this inspection occurred, which is automatically captured up at the top right. Uh, again, the location is critical for these types of workflows. So I can either choose to use my device's location or use a map to, um, to choose the location where this inspection is occurring using imagery as a background. So here I'll choose a location on the crest of the dam. Continuing along with this general site information or inspection information, I'll also capture the site name and weather conditions at the time of inspection. Finally, we'll also specify the area of the facility. So depending on whether I'm inspecting the upstream dam slope or the dam's crest, I get different questions. So with Survey 23, you, you can configure these uh, conditional questions to help guide the user to collect the correct information. So as I choose dam crest, I get a certain specific, uh, set of questions down here. But if I switch over to inspecting the upstream dam slope, 
I now get a different series of questions, which I can go ahead and answer. For each question, I'm prompted to provide yes or no, or NA for not applicable. And I'll continue along until I reach something that I observe. So let's say I do observe something that fits under uh, item 1.6, other deformation settlement or sinkholes. When I select yes, I'm prompted then to provide additional details, for example, that we observed a minor sinkhole. And we'll finish out that portion of the survey by completing everything with no. With every survey, we want to understand what it looks like in the field. So we're able to attach one or more pictures. In this case, I'll quickly grab a recent picture that we took of the, of the facility and provide a couple of closing remarks. So this is the final section where I, I as the operator, can provide my assessment of what I inspected. I can first specify the severity of the findings, whether they're acceptable, low, moderate, or high risk. These might correlate with, for example, your trigger action response plans or TARPs that you've deployed in uh, your facility. The, in this case, we'll select moderate risk. And then the operator can also say whether there's a follow-up action required. If there is, somebody will be notified after this, so a process can be initiated to remediate any issues associated with this, this inspection. Lastly, I'll provide some comments just to specify why there's some follow-up actions. And then sign off on this. Now, um, in this case, since I was connected to the internet, this survey was immediately sent back up to the central database. But if you're working in a disconnected environment, then these records would be stored on the device and they'll be synced up upon connecting to the network. All right, so with that, let's jump back over to what the, the dashboard was that we were looking at earlier. So here within my dashboard, I'm able to comprehensively see all the inspections that have occurred. And because I was connected directly, the survey I just committed would, will become available to me uh, almost instantly here upon refreshing. Now, there's a small sinkhole that we, we had taken note of, and we'll, you'll notice that those types of comments from what was captured in the survey form are fed directly into this application, right? So I can see how I answered this question, and I can see any notes that I provided. On the right side, we've summarized all of the different inspections that have occurred. Uh, we summarized first how many fit into each different risk category, whether it's acceptable, low, moderate, or high risk. We also counted the total number of inspections that occurred per day and how they fit into those risk categories. And then finally, at the bottom, we can see the total number of inspections conducted by each operator. So we can see who's doing what work and is observing what types of um, uh, issues. So this dashboard, it helps you really rapidly uh, see the results of surveys in the context of additional data, right? We're able to combine it with remote sensing, combine it with IoT data, and quickly uh, change between our view of this facility. Oftentimes, though, you'll probably be looking for situations uh, where you might need more direct notifications of something, such as through an email or text message. Right here, I'm visually alerted or notified if I go look at this dashboard. But if I want somebody to receive an email as soon as the survey is completed, um, you, you'll be able to you know, make sure that people are responding to things even more quickly and efficiently. With Survey123, you can configure those types of email notifications to alert relevant persons to this survey. To do this, we can use Microsoft Power Automate, as well as other automation tools such as Integra Map. So I've gone ahead and opened up Microsoft Power Automate, just to show you how simple it is to set up a workflow like that. With Power Automate, we have a Survey123 connector, which allows you to um, provide it as an input. You specify your survey, in this case, the tailings facility inspection. And when the survey response is, is submitted, it goes on and conducts the next action. And here I've set some conditional questions. If action is required is true, so it checks against the attribute data of the survey that's submitted, we want something to happen. So if action is required is equal to yes, if that's true, I want it to send an email notification. In this email notification, you're able to configure it to put any amount of information, in this case, coming from the survey. Uh, we use these attributes, which is to these green sections, and we've uh, formatted it as we'd like it to be sent. 
if uh, if the user answers no, in this case, we said do nothing. We didn't provide any action, so nothing will happen because that inspection is assumed to be okay. Upon the completion of um, of the uh, the workflow that was just shown, after a survey is submitted, it goes through that workflow and an email is going to be sent if a follow-up action is required. This is an example email notification that was sent out after that recent inspection. So it tells me an inspection was conducted by Matt Ballard at this time on the upstream dam slope. The risk level was moderate and a follow-up action was, re was required because there's a sinkhole that we need to address. Now you can customize these uh, and do very interesting things like, for example, provide links out to dashboards, such as the one that we just showed. In this case, if I click on that though, I've instructed the dashboard to actually narrow in on that specific survey that was collected. So it zooms me to it and it actually highlights it so we can see it flashing in here so that users know exactly which one it is. But also on the left side, it's filtered out which record. So we're seeing the specific data that was collected um, according to that email that was sent. Back on that email though, I've also received a link to generate a report. So we all know that oftentimes paper or PDF reports are a necessity, especially from a record keeping perspective. Um, and so we wanna still make sure to provide you the tools that you need to generate those custom reports. In the Survey123 application, you're able to generate those. So I'll click on this link and it's gonna take me directly to the page where I can generate the report that I need. In here, you've got a tool called Feature Report. As I select Feature Report, you can specify templates and these templates are defined in Microsoft Word um, and I'll press Generate here. It'll take about 20 seconds to generate, and when it's completed, you'll end up with a fully formatted, um, filled-in Word document such as this one that we're looking at right now. It's taken a picture to show me where on the tailings dam this survey was conducted. It filled in all the general information about the inspection, as well as specific details about the upstream dam slope uh, that was inspected. So for each question, it put a check mark for no until we reached this one. Um, Oops. Let's see, this one where we had instructed that there was an observation there and it provided pictures of it. So essentially, if I was to summarize, you know, what we saw here, you know, we looked at first a variety of different geospatial data sources that you can use to support monitoring tailings facilities. We looked at how Survey123 can then streamline data collection as one of those data sources um, from the field directly to an authoritative operational dashboard. Uh, these apps can be used to modernize any existing survey or visual inspection um, workflow. And we can also extend this to incorporate notifications and reporting to really meet all the requirements that you needed that you need to ensure the safety and continued operation of your tailings facilities. With that, I, I'd like to pass it back over to Pete just uh, just before we close out the webinar and, and move over to the question and answer section. So thank you everybody for listening. Uh, thank you and thank Michael for your presentations. That was very useful. And we're at the, the question and, and answer portion of the, the webinar. Um, the, the question dialog box is, box is still open if you'd uh, like to throw a quick question in there. And um, I also want to note that we do have a, a follow-up presentation and webinar planned for the other components of this tailings facility uh, management um, uh, presentation or solution that Esri offers. We're hoping to do that uh, probably Q1 of 2021. So, um, and there'll also be some um, survey questions at the end of the uh, webinar that we'd like you to fill out as well. Uh, the one question we did have, um, yes, you are going to receive a, a copy of this presentation. It'll get sent out a few days after uh, we've had time to process it. And I'll also provide some contact information um, here on the last slide for um, contacts to, to get in touch with for further information. Um, maybe, Michael, a quick question to you. How many you know, support personnel do you have in your GIS group that um, helps build and, and support these um, mobile apps that you showed us today? It's uh, currently three people. Um, Mark Smelter is our director of uh, technology. 
And then I have, there's myself, uh, I'm a senior, uh, senior person. And then there's Leland Sutter, who uh, is our remote sensing specialist. Excellent. So a, a fairly uh, small group that, um, that services quite a large group. Is this standardized across Freeport? And how many, how many, um, you know, users on outside of your group does it um, re reach? Right. So, um, uh, so there's typically a GIS analyst in, in every group, like reclamation, land and water, um, or, or multiple GIS analysts, and they support uh, and they support their teams in the field. So I support about 70 site, site engineers and third party consultants, typically for tailings. Excellent, perfect, thank you. Uh, maybe a question over to Matt. Um, let's see, how do you integrate the, the sensor data into your map? Um, maybe this is uh, gonna be touched on the next webinar, but it'd be good to talk to now. Yeah, I think that is a good point. We, we do want to have a webinar in the future to talk more about how we're integrating IoT and real-time data into our platform. And so I would, you know, hope everybody looks for that uh, in the future. Uh, today, though, you know, high level, what we can do, Esri has a, a series of tools to help connect to real-time data sources. Um, traditionally, we would connect to, you know, IoT platforms that are aggregating from sensors themselves. So you might today already have a number of sensors deployed in your, um, you already have a system that's allowing you to visualize and analyze some of that data. But when it comes to looking at it spatially, what we would do is connect to those platforms through either something like an API, database level access. Um, those are sort of the two ways that we would do that. And we've got different solutions to help make that as simple as possible without custom development and things like that. Um, but, but that's the idea is, you know, we connect to whatever, the system is that, that's already managing that sensor data for you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, uh, this question is in line with what you were just talking about and, and one we often get. Um, and I'll just throw it out to you, Matt. What GIS products do I need to purchase to be able to carry out these inspections at our site? Can you maybe talk to the separate applications that you showed today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the one application, the big application that we looked at was Survey123. Survey123, uh, enable in, in order to use it, requires a field worker uh, you know, uh, license within our platform. And so that, that's really the big one that we looked at today. And so if you have access to those types of licenses or field workers, you're able to do just about everything that we saw today, including looking at it in the dashboard, collecting data, generating reports and and everything like that. So um, I would say that that's sort of how I would answer that. When it comes to the creation of surveys, when it comes to creating dashboards and creating all this content in the workflows, there you know, it would be the a creator license within our platform. Okay, perfect. Uh, another question, you mentioned PowerMate. Um, is that free or is, uh, can you expand on that? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was Power Automate. So Microsoft Power Automate is a tool. It used to be called Microsoft Flow for those of you who have used it before. And it's similar to tools like uh, Integromat is another one. They work with uh, webhooks essentially and, and are used for automating different workflows. So whenever a survey is conducted, it kicks off this process um, as we saw earlier. Um, as far as what that costs and how it's licensed, that's a good question for Microsoft. I know, for example, at Esri, uh, we have access to it as part of our agreement with Microsoft. And so you might actually already have a license to, to use something like Power Automate. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna read this question um, directly as it's, it's asked there, Matt, and again to you. Can the survey one, two, three reporting just be demonstrate that was just demonstrated be scheduled or automated. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that, that does make sense. Uh, today, we don't have an out of the box way to automate it, but that could be developed really quite simply, actually. That's something that um, it would be a real, relatively low level of effort to, to develop something with maybe like a Python script that runs every 
every night uh, to generate those reports and put them in a folder, for example, on a network drive or on a cloud drive. That's definitely doable. Perfect. And what, uh, can you touch on the offline um, um, piece of this? What if uh, connectivity drops off or if you don't have connectivity at the time of the survey? Yeah, if, uh, if there's no connectivity, the surveys just get stored on the local device. And as soon as you do reach internet connection, it'll sync those back up to the, the database. Um, so th that's something that we that can absolutely be handled. You know, the big limitation is that users can't uh, receive data, you know, if they're offline. So say a new survey gets created, they just need to download that survey before they go out to the field. Okay. Perfect. Uh, this should be our, our last question. Again, I'm just going to read it as it's asked and maybe throw it out to, to Matt and Michael. Is there a predictive element if this system in, in this system like intelligent tailings management? Bit of a theoretical question. You want to touch on that, Matt, maybe? Yeah. Uh, I, I can let, or Mike, did you have something you wanted to comment? I can let you go first if you had something about any yeah, kind of future state. Yeah, not yet. Um, we're working on that. Uh, there's a whole effort with the global tailing standard that's just come out to um, kind of integrate all of these systems together and and uh, report on tailings facility health um, in a generic way that's standard across the industry. So we're going that route, um, but not yet. Perfect, Matt. Yeah, there. Um, you know, I, I think that there's more to come down down the line in the future uh, as far as like predictive analytics goes. You know, you can do more prescriptive analytics. It is my one way I might think about it. You know configuring the data to show it to you in a way that can help inform decisions um, that might not, the data might not reflect maybe an issue, but might show that there's an issue happening in the future. And you can configure charts where how you symbolize your map to highlight potential issues in the future. And so there, I think there's things that we can do around sort of like AI machine learning to predict things that are going to happen sort of concretely. I think that uh, there's more work to do uh, in the future on that though. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you both. And I think we'll we'll wrap up the questions here. Um, again, you will receive a, a recording of this webinar. All registrants will receive an email with a link to it. If you do have any questions uh, regarding this webinar or anything directly related to ESRI and ArcGIS technology within mining, um, you can contact me directly. Um, P, Peter Will, P. Will at ESRI.com and Matt's and Michael's contact information is uh, up here as well. And, and I really encourage you to join us at the MUG, MUG site on LinkedIn. And we have a, an Esri Mining GeoNet forum. And uh, all of our previous webinars are available um, on those sites as well. So um, lots of practical use cases there for applying ArcGIS to mining workflows. With that, we'll wrap up today's webinar. And I just encourage you all to be safe out there and, and be well. Thank you.